together. And they don't like breaking formation really no, no. because they need to keep in depth. All right, you've had an idea of your own troops. Now you want to know about the enemy. Now Scott must send his scouts deep into enemy territory to spy on the Persians. Now Scott, just be careful with the old scout because the enemy, of course, will be watching. The Persians outnumber the Athenians two to one, so Scott must be on his guard. Who are they? Oh, that's his scout group. That's scout group. <laughs> the Persian army comprises 9,000 archers, as well as 16,000 slingers, infantry and highly trained cavalry. They're a force to be reckoned with. The Persian army has been marching back and forth across Asia for years, destroying empire after empire. The Athenians are up against a hard, razor-sharp Persian army that's as close to professional soldiering as you've got in the ancient world. Athens is standing alone against the Persians. They're in a long row of four at the moment, and some um, guys the Persian soldiers wore hoods with holes cut in for them to see, and that must have given them a bizarre alien appearance. Unlike Greek soldiers, Persian soldiers fought silently. They didn't shout, they didn't chant, they just went to work like professionals. A silent, masked enemy, wearing a bizarre garment. They wore trousers. And as far as the Greeks were concerned, a trouser-wearing barbarian, someone who didn't speak Greek but just went bar, bar, bar. These were aliens. They must have been frightening. How are your scouts doing, Scott? And then can we go right we're trying to get close to them without actually them seeing too much mm. of us. Last to disembark are the Persians' deadliest weapon. Scott must now take careful note of the 5,000 highly skilled cavalry now assembling on the beach. They are trained to use hit-and-run tactics to disrupt and confuse their enemies. The most fearsome part of the fearsome Persian army is the cavalry. These cavalrymen with their missile weapons formed 20% of the Persian army at this stage, and they were very, very important to the Persian way of war. Of course, it gave them mobility, it gave them striking power, but it also gave them the ability to attack at different points at different times during a battle. The Greeks, of course, are hemmed in because they basically have to advance forward in this huge body. Tactically, the Greeks are always in danger of being given a good kicking by a mobile army. But the Persian army could be crippled by their cavalry's late arrival on the beach. Can the team turn this to their advantage? The Persian cavalry are not necessarily in position to attack from the beginning and therefore that's an added incentive for them to strike as quickly as possible before they actually do reach the field. While studying their enemy, have the team left their scouts in mortal danger? Oh no, what's this? Uh, <laughs> Scott's out of the back. Shoot out from there, Scott. That's us. Grass. Yeah, they're us. It's Scott's scouting group. It looks like they might be moving their scouts a little bit too close to the Persian army and they may be tempted to fire at them. If you can run down between the two, two divisions... You want me to run down between the two, do you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's see what they do. Let's go straight through the middle. Oh, there oh. we go. Get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> they want to start the battle already. That'd be right. Go. You're very relaxed about out. this. It's okay. That's it. Run, Scott. Go. Can you see what's going on while you're there, Can Scott? You see That's hard. Try and you get your camera in and see what's going on. These are archers. And you're sure you want to lose this many men before the battle starts? Well, no, we don't really. Yeah, but there's not a lot of these guys. We needed to get in and see what they've got. You didn't expect them to engage, did you? What? That's the trouble with the enemy, they just oh, don't no, wait. Oh, no, no, they're leaving us alone now. Absolutely okay. no manners, right. Just hate that? that was probably a bit of an error, actually. But well, Just as we thought, they did exactly send their scouts a little bit too close to the Persians, and the Persians gave them a bit of a bloodied nose. Maybe they found out enough information to justify it, I don't know, but they're learning slowly. All right, Scott, what did you find out? Found out that we've got... we're up against it. The team are indeed up against it. At the expense of his scouts, Scott has uncovered the Persian arsenal. But has he found out enough about their strengths and weaknesses? And how will the team apply this to their battle plan? All right, so that's the opposition. Yeah. Now is the time to discuss and decide on your battle plan. 
The team's best chance of victory is to take the battle to the Persians and fight them on the open plain. But has Dave grasped this fact? I'd like to hold a position, let them come to us, and then back them back and literally hold one space and hold the high ground. They're going to hold the high ground and let them come to us. It's a complete contradiction of everything they've been told in terms of the value of their troops, how they're good at close quarter combat. They are a shock weapon. They fight best on flat land. They haven't listened to a thing. They're lightly armored. They're not going to want to fight up front. My only worry about that is they've got very, very strong archery. And we need to get rid of that because if you do go and engage and come straight up against them, the archers are useless. They yeah. can't fight you because yeah. you're there or you're hand to hand with them. We've got some speed in the horses. How many horses? Is that legal? <laughs> <laughs> horses are red herring. They don't have any horse, they have some generals. If they send those in, they'll be wiped out. If we got the skirmishers over there what, yeah. and followed through with the, the horses to get rid of the archers, the skirmishers can then get into the battle. Here's your skirmishers, right? At the moment, I've just brought them out of the way. What do you want to do with them? Up the front. Get them in there. And start attacking the archers yeah. with them early. They want to use their skirmishers to take out the Persian archers. There are, of course, far more Persian archers than Greek skirmishers, and that if they try that and keep their hot lights back, it, it can only end in disaster. Let's aim the skirmishers at some archers yeah, and get rid, of, off. Yeah. Let's get rid yeah. of some archers. Yeah. These skirmishers have javelins. They have no armor at all. They use their cloaks wrapped around their arms as protection. Very vulnerable because archers have a range of 200 yards and that's a lot further than they can throw a javelin. I can't see that we have any alternative but to use the long range people straight at first. The team is letting themselves be ruled by their fears and we're not seeing them trying to use their strengths against enemy weakness. If we put them all in a lump, right. if we just had this great big lump of guys in the middle, they're just going to fire at us with their archers and we're just going to get murdered. Whereas if we can just maybe just take it to a, a fairly thick line, I think, going towards them. He's beginning to talk about spreading them out in a long line and using them in an offensive way. I think he's, you know, almost blundering into it, but he's getting there somehow. So if we put, say, six lots of them like that, we can back these up effectively to use as reinforcements if we start getting heavy pressure in one area or another, right? And then towards the end, when we start to f hopefully grind them down, we can bring in fresh legs towards the se end of the second half. Dave has just articulated the idea of having fresh legs towards the end of the second half. That's what we might call a tactical reserve, which is a nice idea. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get up close yeah, I realize that. early enough such that when the archers move out of the way, right, yeah. and these guys come in, well, we'll be then fighting. We'll be the fighting hand on hand, and these guys are now redundant, aren't they? Because they can't we fire can actually at us. get rid of them with the horses. Then we'll send, the, then we'll send the horses around okay. after them. How about that? Yeah. For a plan. Dave's aggressive new plan offers his team their best chance of victory. But will Drew, his fellow general, fall in line? The reason I don't like the idea is that I believe that, that we're engaging them straight away. Well, we can time that, can't we? We can agree that, like we said before. We'll just we'll sit up here, basically, ready to go, ready to rumble, looking big and bad and fierce, right? Yeah. You can talk the talk, can't you? Oh, yeah, man. And, uh, and then, basically, <laughs> when, when they start to come out, us, yeah, they're going to start okay. pinging at us. Then we'll decide when we're going to go, but we want to use the protection... We're going to start they'll... pinging at you. Well, right. the, they will be pinging. Right. Although General Dave has encouraged his team towards an aggressive attack, General Drew is more cautious. By reverting to a strategy of defence, the team risk handing the initiative to the Persian army. OK, well, the time is almost coming to see if this plan is any use at all. Adopt <laughs> get your positions <laughs> and get ready to deploy your troops. Commanding the Athenians at the Battle of Marathon are a team of yachtsmen from Ipswich. They must defend the democracy of Athens and defeat the might of the invading Persian Empire. The future of Greek civilization rests on their shoulders. The citizen army of Athens is outnumbered two to one, but their strength lies in brute force. They could strike their enemy hard and fast before the Persians have a chance to deploy their cavalry. But the team plan to retreat from the plain, where their hoplites would naturally fight, and hold the high ground in defense. They will wait for a Persian advance and then strike hard to drive the Persians out of Greece, deploying their skirmishers in the front line. With time on their enemy's side, the team have placed their trust in the flexibility of their tactical reserve. Scott, yeah. I've moved my those reser that reserve force back up that hill a bit further. Everything back? Is that what you I want? Quite a long way away, they won't get there very quickly. A culture known for forward thinking